this question has it doesn't really have a right or wrong answer, but I am struggling to kind of figure out where I should go. So I'm at a point in kind of my mixing journey where I want to start going out and getting paid work. I feel I've put in the hard work and the practice and the learning to go out and start getting paid work. So for somebody that's new to the industry, obviously I have the advantage of the YouTube, obviously my name's out there a little bit, but in regards to mixing, what do you think would be a half decent rate to start charging? Again, this is a very ambiguous question, but I'm a little bit unsure how to charge as somebody new at the industry. Obviously, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, it would have been different. But in modern day times, like, what do you think somebody like me should be charging on average? That's interesting. Um, I think whatever projects I do, I don't have a fixed price anymore. What I do is, um, so somebody emails me and says, Warren, would you mix my EP album record single, whatever it is? And the first thing I do, I never, ever say this is how much I charge. I say, can you send me the music so I can hear it? There's a great reason for doing that. Is number one, sometimes it's just spec and people are trying to figure out information. Maybe they're just trying to figure out how much I charge. Maybe they're trying to figure out, um, before they even start the record, whether I would be expensive or cheap to do it. So I always ask that question first. So whenever somebody asks you about mixing a record, just say, cool, send me some music so I can hear. And always say, just MP3s is fine. You know, whatever your rough mix is, give it send to me. So you're going to weed out tons of people, first of all. Then the second thing is that you'll get, you'll get it and you'll be able to figure out the number one most important thing. How long is it going to take you? If they send something and it is the worst recorded, fully distorted, everything's out of time, out of tune thing, but you want the work, you're going to have to think to yourself, wow, to make this sound good, it's going to take me a day just to edit and clean up this stuff. Yeah, and ultimately, and it's five ultimately songs. can you it might get take... it to sound good? Because if at the end of the day, you're still going to be exactly. putting out a bad sounding product, do you want that to represent your brand? Yeah, exactly. So, so then, you know, if it's immaculately recorded and the rough sound amazing, and you think to yourself, I think I could pull this together in a couple of hours to make it sound pretty darn good, send them back something, and then get notes and tweak it from there, and maybe over the course of, you know, two or three recalls, I've got something amazing. In the back of your mind, maybe that's four, five, six hours work. How much do you want to get paid an hour? Do you want to get 25? Do you want to get 50? What's your hourly rate? What do you need to get paid? So if you're on like a, you know, uh, uh, you're an up and coming guy or girl, $25 an hour might be 25 pounds an hour might seem like a right kind of thing. And you just estimated in reality, it might take you five hours to get it because it's pretty well recorded. And then you might want to have to do two or three recalls, which might be like half an hour, hour each time. So in your mind, you've suddenly got up to like 175 which is actually quite a reasonable price. It's not too expensive, but it makes sense in your world. So, But then there might be something that comes in that's amazing, but it's got like 172 tracks on it. You, um, you know it's going to take you a long time. It's a seven-minute you know, masterpiece of a five-tempo, three-key change song. And you're thinking to yourself, this is going to take me like two days, this one song. And I can't quote 200 pounds or whatever to do this. Uh, this is going to take me two or three days and I want to make 150, 200 pounds a day. So suddenly it's a 500 pound gig, $500 gig. It, that's the way I look at it. You have to decide what your hourly is worth. And that's the way to do it. Because when somebody says, oh, I'm $500 a mix and, I, and somebody sends them an acoustic guitar vocal mix with a bongo in the background, really? But then if they send them something which is 172 tracks, and it might take them three days to get even half decent. And then they've got so many recalls because the guy wants to try this uh, weird reverse effect on this. You know, you it's all about finding how much you want to make an hour and how long you think something is going to take. And then having really good boundaries. If they if they you say to them, I'll do th I will do three recalls. If you want to go over three recalls, you pay for more yeah. recalls. And it means that the first set of notes you get are going to be really detailed and really going to help you. If you see, have a very loose, oh, don't worry about it, I'll just, I'll do as many recalls as it takes, you'll get your first notes to be, yeah, it's pretty cool. Can you make the drums a bit roomier? So you do the roomier drums. Two days later. Yeah, I played it to my friend John, and he thinks that the drums are too roomy now, but also I don't like the bass guitar sound, and, and the snare itself isn't really, really good, and can you do that? Then you do all that, and then three days later, another set of notes. Yeah. You, you need to be really clear and create really good sets of boundaries. Um, and also, if it's a band, just say you only want one email. Just like, guys, get together, yeah. discuss yeah. what you want to do. 
You know, don't send me one from the drummer, one from the bass player, one from the singer, one from the guitar player, one from the keyboard player, one from the nanny's best friend's uncle's sister's do <laughs> dog, you know, that, that heard it and thinks there's not enough 20K in it. You know what I mean? It, you, 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 need, you need, if you create really good boundaries and you figure out your hourly, whether it be 25, 50, 100, a million, whatever it is you want to charge, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Um, and and as you get better at your craft and you get more and more stuff, just increase your hourly. Now, I've never liked the I, I mix for a five hundred dollars or I mix for a thousand. It never works out. Um, and there's always a compromise. There's always a compromise in some way, shape, or form. And I always feel like I've either a ripped off the artist because they send me a xylophone and a, and a and a shaker and I charge them a thousand, or the other way around and I'm working three days on something and I'm barely even paying Eric's wages. So, it you know. Definitely mm. figure it out for yourself. I think, Paul, I think I've heard your stuff. You're, you're at a great level. I think if you want to start stealing some stuff, I think two, 250 is makes sense for a song. I think there's a lot of up-and-comers that charge 500 a song. I know independent name producers, engineers, and mixers, which are mixing from 500 to 1,000 a song. Now, don't get me wrong. They're talented enough, and they have templates, and they could probably do two or three songs in a day that will sound amazing. Um, because they're applying the same idea that we're talking about. They want to make a grand or two a day because they're a famous guy, girl, whatever. They want to make that money. So they look at it like, okay, I can knock this out two or three songs in a day and still only work six to eight hours. So they're applying the same, the same kind of economic thinking that we're talking about here. It's just all about like saying to yourself, what do I want to get paid a day? What am I worth? I don't want to kill myself because work, working past eight hours mixing is not smart. Your ears will be useless. So you need to really kind of focus. Six to eight hours is really the maximum to be working hard on a mix. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it all comes back to that. You know, what do you, what, what's your alley? What are you worth? How long is it going to take you? The other things to factor in, Paul, and this is something I've thought long and hard about uh, when pricing my live sound business is you have to factor in tax. You have to factor in um, expenses, for example, if you're doing it from a studio. Yep. You have to factor in, and I, I do this per gig. I have a number in my head that I set aside to repay myself for the £50,000 worth of live sound equipment that I've invested. Now, that's all paid off for, so it's all profit now, which is amazing. But I had to factor that in. Insurance, I pay £1,000 a year to insure my live sound equipment. Every gig, I have to put a contribution aside. So if I, for example... Did let's. This is not what I charge. I charge more. But if I charge, say, five hundred pound a gig, I'm thinking. Well, first hundred of that is tax gone. So four hundred pound less. Let's say twenty five quid in fuel, twenty five quid insurance contribution, twenty five or fifty pound gear insurance. Uh, sorry, gear repayment contribution. I'm down at three hundred pound. Now, if if I'm then on site for ten hours, okay, that's thirty pound an hour. That's just about acceptable for me personally. Now, if you want more than that, great. And if you want less than that, you can be more competitive. The other thing to bear in mind is when pricing is, it is very difficult if you get a regular client to put your price up. So if you go in at £100 a track, $100 a track, if you think, right, well, a few months later, well, I've got lots of experience now, I've got work coming in, that client who's come back, I'm going to double their fee. They're going to be like, no, not interested. Personally, I think you have to be bold with it. The more I charge with the sound business, the busier I got when I was building it up which I found very interesting. Psychologically, people think yep. value is, is worth more. The product is better. Yeah. You know, there's so many examples of that. So it is a fine balance. One thing you could do is go in high, and if you don't get work, go a bit lower. And if you don't get work, go a bit lower, and, and reduce it until you get work. But the sad fact is you could easily end up at zero.